6.3, Proving Identities, is on pages 309 to 315. Our curriculum outcome is the same as usual. It's 30.5, Demonstrate Understanding of Trigonometric Identities. And our lesson objectives, first, we need to learn what it means to prove an identity. Second, we need to learn how to verify an identity. Third, we need to learn how to prove an identity algebraically. And fourth, we need to learn some strategies that'll help you prove these identities. So when you prove an identity, you're showing that the two sides of the identity are equivalent. And in order to do this, you cannot perform operations across the equal sign. You can only work on one side of the identity. So here's some strategies you may want to use. One, use known identities for substitution. So have all your identities on a sheet of paper right in front of you. Number two, if you see quadratics, check the Pythagorean identities. Three, rewrite the identity using only sine or cosine. Four, work with the more complicated side of the identity first. Five, if you need to, you could simplify each side of the identity, but remember that you can't perform operations across the equal sign. Six, you need to know how to factor so you can simplify expressions. Seven, you need to know how to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of an expression. And we'll use all of these strategies in the next couple examples. First example, verify the following identity, then prove the identity, show it true for all permissible values of x. So here's our identity, tan x times cos x divided by cosecant x should equal one minus cosine squared x. So to verify the identity, we need to pick a value for x, so that would be an angle, and then plug in that angle for every place that we see x. So I'm gonna choose 45 degrees. So I'm looking for tan of 45, times cos of 45 divided by cosecant of 45, and that should equal one minus cos squared of 45 degrees. So if you remember from the unit circle at 45 degrees, the coordinates are root two over two, root two over two, and one. So now instead of putting in tan 45, I can throw in a one. So we're just making substitutions. Cosine of 45 is root two over two. Now cosecant of uh, 45 degrees, we don't have here, but it is the reciprocal of sine of 45, so it will be two over root two. And we have to show that that's gonna equal one minus cosine squared of 45 is root two over two squared. So we get root two over two. We're dividing by a fraction, so we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal, which is root two over two. So we get two over four, which is a half on the right hand or on the left hand side. On the left hand, on the right hand side, sorry, we get one minus um, the root two over two squared is root four over four. So that's one minus two over four, which is one minus a half, and so a half does equal a half. So this is called verifying the identity, picking up an angle plugging it in, and then using coordinates from the unit circle um, to figure out if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So I would pick, as an angle, I would always pick an angle from the unit circle, 30, 45, or 60. Now that we are proving the identity, we need to have all our identities available to us. So here's a list of all the identities that we've talked about so far. Hopefully you have those on a sheet of paper right in front of you. And so to prove this thing, we need to start making some substitutions. Now. Some of the suggestions for strategies is that we wanna work with the more complicated side, and that would be the left-hand side. So I think the left-hand side is more complicated than the right-hand side. So what you can start doing is making some substitutions. Now, I don't see any squares on the left-hand side, so that gets rid of any sort of um, Pythagorean identities. I don't see any sum or addition, so that gets rid of all those and all those. There are no double angles, so I'm not using any of those. So it just leaves me with some of these six identities. So I'm going to make some substitutions, and one of the strategies was to also move these things into sine and cos. So tan is the same as sine x over cos x. We still have a cos x here. And cosecant is the same as one over sine x. So notice that I am not multiplying both sides by cosecant x because I cannot 
uh, perform operations across the equal sign. So I'm just making substitutions. Now I'm going to start doing some canceling off. So I have the cosine x's canceling off. And that means I have sine x over 1 minus sine x. Well, if I'm dividing by a fraction, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So I get sine x times sine x. So that's sine x squared. Now I'm at the point where I might want to reevaluate re some of these identities that I crossed off because I have sine x squared. Well, if I look at this identity here, sine x squared, I could isolate that. And that would just be sine x squared equaling 1 minus cosine x squared x. And that's exactly what I'm trying to find out. So I can make a substitution that says sine x squared is the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared x. And that equals what we were trying to get to. So although it wasn't on the list of strategies, one of the things you also need to do is always have an idea of what you're trying to find. So you know when you get there. So you know you're trying to get to 1 minus cos squared x. When I see this sine squared x, I automatically think Pythagorean. So I go and check my Pythagorean identities. Here's another example. It says prove that the following is an identity for all permissible values of x. So we're just proving this identity. So again, we want to have our identities available. Now in this case, again, I don't see any sum or difference or double angles, so I'm going to get rid of those off the bat. But it's really tough to decide which side is more complicated, so I'm just going to work with the left-hand side. So I have 1 minus cos x times sine x. Well, I know by looking at the right-hand side, I eventually need to get 1 plus cos x on the bottom. So you can always choose to multiply both sides by a conjugate of something. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of the left-hand side by 1 plus cos x, because this is the exact same thing as multiplying by the number 1, because it's something divided by itself. And that's a strategy that you could use whenever you see sort of conjugates on either side of your identity. So I get 1 minus cos x and 1 plus cos x. That gives me 1 minus cos squared x. And on the bottom, I have sine x times 1 plus cos x. Now maybe you recognize this as in the from the last example, that 1 minus cos squared x is the same thing as sine squared x. Because we had done this manipulation just a second ago. And so we've got sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. So I can make that substitution. So my top or my numerator is now sine squared x. And that's over sine x times 1 plus cos x. And always keeping in mind that we want to get to this point here. That's an, uh, maybe another reason why I chose the 1 minus cos squared x to make a substitution and make it sine squared x. Because I know I need a sine x on the top. And now the sine x on the bottom cancels off with one of those. And I am left with sine x over 1 plus cos x. Which is exactly what I was supposed to prove. So, key thing is you need to just try and make some substitutions. In a question like this, when you see conjugates, your best bet is to multiply the top and the bottom by a conjugate. If we worked on the right-hand side, I would multiply both sides by 1 minus cos x. And the proof would be a little bit different, but we'd still be able to prove. So, the steps that you take, it's not just one solution for each question. You could do any number of steps and get um, the left-hand side equaling the right-hand side. So it's not only one solution. Our final example, it says, prove that the following is an identity for all permissible values of x. So we have a really big complicated identity here. So what we need to do is always just start on one side or the other. In this example, I will eventually move, do a little bit of work on the left-hand side and then do a little bit of work on the right-hand side to show that we're going to get the same thing. So here's our list of identities. I see on the left-hand side where I'm going to start that sine 2x is here. Double angle identities are tricky, so you might as well get rid of them by making a substitution. So sine 2x is the same as 2 sine x cos x minus cos x. And that's all over 4 sine squared x minus 1. Now. Next thing that this example is here for is to show you that we can also factor. 
So on the top, I'm going to take out the greatest common factor of cos x. And I will get 2 sine x minus 1. On the bottom, I can factor that thing like a difference of squares. So I get 2 sine x minus 1 and 2 sine x plus 1. And so what's happened here is that I've found something that actually cancels out, this 2 sine x minus 1. And I'm left with cos x all over 2 sine x plus 1. Now, I want that 2 sine x plus 1 on the bottom, so I'm good to go on, on the left-hand side. I'm going to switch over to the right-hand side and try and get some manipulations happening so I can show that it's also equal to cos x over 2 sine x plus 1. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to take out a greatest common factor of just cos x. And what I'm left with is sine squared x plus cos squared x, because this was cos cubed. And that's all over 2 sine x plus 1. Now, knowing that I want to keep the 2 sine x plus 1 in the bottom, I'm going to leave that there. Now, on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, the only thing that's dif different right now is that sine squared x plus cos squared x is on the right-hand side, and I don't have that on the left-hand side. But lucky for us, sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So I can just make a substitution of 1. And anything multiplied by 1 just remains the same. So I have actually proven that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side and prove this identity. So in summary, there are strategies that you need to know and need to be able to use to help prove trig identities. And if asked to verify an identity, simply pick an angle from the unit circle and substitute those values into both sides of the identity. You need to have a list of all your identities handy so you can see what your options are for substitutions. And you may need to actually try the question more than once in order to prove the identity. And the only way you get better at proving identities or any sort of math is to do math. So there's lots of questions for you on pages 314 to 315. I have a lot of extra questions if you want more practice, but simply looking at this video will not make you learn a thing. You need to practice, practice, practice. And with that, I will see you in class tomorrow.